So I was um, out here mowing and it is a simple pleasure for the complexity of my job to be able to mow straight lines in the yard on my Gravely Zero Turn. But I noticed this tree and I thought I'd share something with you. So this is a uh, sycamore and um, it's dead at the top. And some folks might think, oh, hey guys, how you doing buddy? Some folks might think that'd be the opportunity to take that tree down. But uh, I've noticed in the past that little birds love to light in those limbs up there. Some bluebirds, cardinals, uh, little chickadees, Carolina wrens. And you can see there's new growth coming in here. But then look right up there. Just a nice hole. I wonder who lives in there. I don't know, but um, Gus, what do you think? You don't care, huh? Well, I'm done on the Gravely. I'll park it in a minute, but I've got to go do some uh, planting over here and I wanted to show you that too while I was at it. So I've already planted this one blueberry tree right here, bush, it's a little bush. And I thought I'd be smart and plant the other blueberry there cause it's a uh, Bradford pear is growing by and I don't like the Bradford pear so much. And Mary Beth dared me to plant it right beside it. And she had a much better idea because I planted this one halfway between that Bradford and this Bradford. I think I'll go ahead and pick it up and take it down there. I'm gonna plant this blueberry halfway between these two. And I'm pretty sure it will do fine in this shade. In the summertime, when the sun's straight up, it'll get sun. There's a blank spot above it. Now the next task is um, these hosta. We've got a nice little hosta bed and you can see where there are hosta already growing. And my job now is to put those hosta. These two sitting out here are going to the veranda. We'll do those later. But if you want things to come up and be pretty later on, you got to plant them now. That is a pear tree that I planted a few years ago. And you can see it's getting pretty tall, taller than me. And it's sitting here by this other pear tree that puts out some wonderful pears. So in the world of living here on the farm and your psychotherapy parallels, you gotta plant things if you want pretty things to come up later on. Right, Gus? Right. So a quick thought about that pear tree. That bigger pear tree was self-pollinating, producing fruit alone, but a lot of plants need a partner to coexist. Oh, hey, Gus. So they're um, you know, they pollinate each other. I've got some apple trees and some fig trees that need each other to pollinate. And we know now about trees, how they communicate, where you'll see an oak and a pine growing so close to each other and they'll shade each other and give each other room. Curious stuff, but you know, we plant trees for tomorrow, right? Um, we'll get the fruit, but you know, it, it, it yields later. And sometimes you plant some ideas for tomorrow and you plant your hopes for tomorrow and maybe plant some love for tomorrow. Let that love come up and provide a beautiful garden for you. This hosta is gonna be a nice garden. We'll just have to watch and see.
I like being out in nature. So I really do like the uh, music of those post hole diggers on that wheelbarrow, but I left this section in here because it's cool and there's Gus and it takes some work to do some planting. You've got to do the work, chop wood, carry water. If you want a beautiful garden later on, if you want a beautiful life later on, do the work. If you want love, do the work. There you go. Well, I got that much done. Uh, this hosta planted in that bed and the two moved up to the veranda. And uh, Gus, did you help? We planted that blueberry there that's between these two Bradford pears and that one between these two Bradford pears. And now I got a special prize, which is a yucky looking thing right here. And I didn't do it right, but we're gonna see what happens, which is, that is some Osage orange uh, fruit with seeds in it that I let overwinter and dry out. And remarkably, uh, maybe I can get a sponsorship this way. That would be interesting by uh, sobriety self. Woodford Reserve, um, the very cool thing is um, Woodford Reserve is a liquor distillery in a little valley up above Nashville and um, there's an Osage orange there. Well, the cool thing about Osage orange is there's nothing indigenously alive right now for um, that plant to eat it or move it around. So who moved it? Um, Woolly Mammoth did. Uh, excuse me. I'm one-handed filming and dumping my potting soil on top of it. If I can get that done. I think I can. How about that? One hand. See? One hand. So, Osage Orange uh, is a very cool wood. Um, not only that, only the mammoth ate it because their mouth could deal with its spininess, but um, that it grows such a good wood, uh, highly rot resistant, and it is what the Native Americans used to make bows. And um, I used it to put gunwales on my cedar strip canoe. How about that? So we've got a little bit of gardening done this afternoon. We'll see if that stuff comes up later. I think it will. And uh, it makes a great hedge, a hedgerow, because it grows really thick and spiny until it gets tall. Ooh, we got to put the gravely away. Can you see the goose over there? Let me see if I can zero in on the goose. He's way over there. And I don't know if Mama Goose is on the nest yet or not. Another cool thing that's on the way. All right. All right, guys. One more little chore to do. Um, we've got a... Uh, a good old fashioned glider that has um, 
a lot of rust on it, but Mary Beth wants to keep it the way it is. My good friend Lee Pickard down at Protect the Coat in Perry. These are some beta sample bottles before he went public. And um, so <laughs> I lost these two. They were sitting right there the whole time here where I parked the, park the golf cart. And uh, anyway, so um, I'm gonna go scratch down. I got a um, good steel, uh, think of that as a paint scraper, but a good steel brush, scratch down that uh, glider and see how good it looks because it takes some work to protect uh, what you have. But of course, any good analysand participant in psychotherapy, somebody learning to cope, knows that, that, um, you know, you have to do your work and then you have to have some boundaries to uh, protect the work that you've done. And the sun and the uh, rain and the humidity and the heat and the cold don't care. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to name family members or boss or anything like that, but you know, uh, as Morley says, you got to take care of your number one player. So let's uh, grab these and we're going to go work on that glider and maybe have it ready for Easter and um, it should be pretty cool. But do you get what I'm laying down? Are you picking it up? boundaries. You got it, Gus? You ready? So Mary Beth thinks this has a perfectly good patina. So I'm going to knock some of the loose stuff off the top. So it's a new idea, thank you Perkins Brothers. My goal is to get y'all to sponsor me. So, um, leveled the driveway and we got some uh, audio to add to that and planted some hostas and we mowed the yard and we noticed a sweet little sycamore tree that needs to be a good home for birds and let it grow out from underneath. And we're finishing up Saturday before Palm Sunday and my goal is to uh, share with you life here in the country and its psychodynamic parallels. <laughs> uh, big word for, you know, there's a lot we can learn from nature. Uh, we have our own nature. We have our own spirit. Our spirit is enlivened by nature. So, um, I look forward to spending some time with you doing this, if I can figure out how to edit. My boy Matt, not my, my friend's son Matt is in Spain and I may have to get his help. We'll see.